Thanks everyone for joining our presentation today on accepting the challenge of health and well-being for Missourians at every stage of life. And it's a model within extension. I hope that uh, you all are familiar with extension, but we're gonna bring you up to speed in just a moment. So today's objectives are to better understand the mission of MU Extension and how the creation of the community health program area supports that mission. Learn how MU Extension Community Health Program Area creates partnerships to promote the health and well being of communities across the state. Learn more about the current community health projects and their impacts on the health and well being of our target, target populations. And then also explore the possibility of collaboration with Community Health Program Area uh, to positively impact the health and well-being of Missourians. So almost three years ago, uh, my colleague and I, Catherine Morgan, were hired at MU Extension to work together to assess and expand how Extension was focusing and integrating health into its programs. So if you're familiar with Extension, it's been a resource and been around for over 100 years across the United States and also in Missouri. Here, there are four main areas uh, where we have been focusing over those uh, over that past century, mostly uh, agriculture and environment, youth and families, business and community, and then also health and safety. What we found when we first came on to assess what was happening um, was that there was quite a bit of work being done in the nutrition and health arena. And while this work was taking place, there was still a need to align and more uh, fully broaden the scope, which we will talk more about in detail throughout this hour. So there's a lot that's transpired to get us where we are today. Community health as a program area was announced last fall and we continue to chart our way. Um, so we will cover some of the areas where we're focusing and what will drive the work uh, as we move forward. The mission of the University of Missouri Extension is to improve lives, communities, and economies by producing relevant, reliable, and responsible, responsive educational strategies that enhance access to resources and the research of the University of Missouri. Our Vice Chancellor for Extension and Engagement, Dr. Marshall Stewart, has challenged us to address three grand challenges in the areas of economic opportunity, educational access, and workforce uh, preparedness, and also health and well being. Health is the foundation for which other impacts can be made in education and economy. And simply put, if people are not healthy, healthy, their ability to learn will diminish and ultimately will not contribute to a healthy workforce. So we envision creating an environment where all Missourians thrive at every stage of life. We showed you the four areas Extension has focused for many years and while community health is another and new program area is not separate, but it's woven into the fabric of extension, making it even stronger. Health is connected to nearly every facet of our work and impacts communities we serve. So we have all have a role to play in our own health and, and the health of our communities. The three grand challenges present an opportunity to extend a roadmap for healthy, productive, and lifelong impacts for ourselves, our families, and our communities. Traditionally, when people go to their doctor, they're treated for that isolated illness without considering all of the other factors that are making the person sick. So that's where community health comes in to consider all of the factors or what we all know as social determinants of health. Within extension, we're already touching each of the social determinants through all the program areas, but we did see a need to better integrate by increase, increasing our health focus. So how do we plan to do that? 
By applying a health lens, we're working to bring awareness to the interconnected way health impacts every asset, as, aspect of society and the economy. Health in all policies calls for integration, participation, and collaboration across every extension program and putting health first in every decision we make. As it relates to communities, you know that some communities are healthier than others. And so what are the healthier ones doing that others aren't? Even though there's no pres prescriptive way of what this might look like, we still need to take a moment and rethink our approach to working with businesses and community champions to help transform communities to be healthier and more resilient. There are many other efforts focused on overall health and well being, which is evident by all the partners present here today. Extension touches every community across the state with, with the presence in all 114 counties in the city of St. Louis. However, we can do a better job of collaborating with external partners and stakeholders to make a greater impact in the lives of Missourians. So when the former Surgeon General said, go to them, listen to them, let them tell you what they need, we are already there and we are perfectly poised to enhance the work of our partners and stakeholders impacting health on a much larger scale. So since the creation of the new extension unit, which is called Community Health Engagement and Outreach, um, we, we've had a lot of progress. And so with this uh, combined integrated work or integrated approach to the grand challenges of health and well-being, CHEO was created uh, through a partnership established in 2018, but formalized in 2020 between U MU Extension engagement in the MU School of Medicine, focused on community and population health with providers and researchers throughout the university system. CHEO aims to close the health and healthcare gap with high touch community health approaches that link Missouri communities and, uni and university resources. This integrated interdisciplinary process to health create synergy, leading to opportunities for disease prevention, improving health literacy, translating research to practice, optimizing data collection, and adopting place-based strategies for collective impact. CHEO's vision is to touch every part of the state with innovations and knowledge and create an environment where, again, all those, all of our um, citizens will thrive at every stage of life. CHEO is a vivid example of transformational engagement principles at work. The program's creation represents the confluence of research and scholarship, clinical training and practice, and public and community health needs. It's going to uh, help the promise uh, that all things Missouri bringing all things Missouri to rural communities and also urban neighborhoods where health challenges abound and resources have been historically scarce. So here you'll see that CHEO has a budget of $1.2 million. With a, we have a small bandwidth and we have about 3.75 FTEs. Many of our programs focus on prevention health and well-being promotion. We have other programs that focus on opioid and substance use disorder. We serve both youth and adults across Missouri. And a couple of examples of our projects are building capacity for recovery-friendly communities. Uh, we have a COVID-19 vaccine and prevention resources that we provided across the state. We are collaborating with the Department of Health and Senior Services on a diabetes prevention program, and also the Stanford Youth Diabetes Coaching Program. We partner with Iowa State University to bring prosper to rural communities. And then we've developed some medical student education modules. Uh, here, you can see the wide array of partners that we have created in this journey. So now we'll turn it over to Dr. Kathleen Quinn to tell you more. Well, actually, I have one more slide. <laughs> uh, 
So what, finally, I'll say that community health is here to support the work that's already happening. And we want to connect the dots by collaborating to develop a statewide strategic roadmap with a unified collective message and work to identify trends before they happen so that we can be responsive instead of reactive. It's also important for us to reach new audiences, especially our most vulnerable families and communities. For instance, how are we addressing issues like diseases of uh, despair, such as suicide, substance abuse, COVID, and other illnesses or complications associated with them? How are we contributing to these areas and how can we offer hope through educational resources, curating community assets, lifelong learning that lead to job opportunities? How are we also improving resilience? How are we creating connection through family cohesion, family parenting and relationship skills, offering broadband, community engagement, and more. In order to be relevant and impactful, we want to translate research to practice more quickly. We partner to develop branded health promotion resources that are culturally and linguistically appropriate and offer technical assistance to organizations that uh, partner with us. Okay, Dr. Quinn. Thank you, Chiquita. So as Chiquita described, she and Catherine worked for almost probably close to two years setting the groundwork before I came on board, which I'll talk a little bit more about on the next slide. But we started thinking about the interdisciplinary innovations that we had the possibility of creating with my role in the School of Medicine and Workforce Development and Community Health. So again, there's a simulation van with the School of Medicine. We have Rural Workforce Development with the Rural Track Pipeline Program. We work closely with the School of Health Professions, mainly public health. We work on a clinical rural immersion project with the School of Nursing, Medicine, and Pharmacy that we had in Sedalia this summer, and it will be in, in West Plains next year. It's a two-week program where students work together to not only understand their interdisciplinary and specialty roles in a rural community, but what their role is to the community at large. We also work with the Missouri Telehealth Network, and we'll talk a little bit about some of, some of the projects that they're working on. They did provide hotspots for care this year with a, with a large grant. The Center for Health Policy, some of you may be familiar with the Workforce Data Project, where we gather data from all the healthcare providers across the state as they register for their license every year or every two years. We also work with Continuing Education for Health Professions, which is nursing and medicine, and we're hoping to obtain joint accreditation, and then MU Extension. So we started thinking about all of these, these disciplines. Um, next slide, Chiquita. And in, in January of 2020, the University of Missouri School of Medicine and the Office of Extension Engagement, we created the collaborative partnership that demonstrates MU's integrated approach to community health, as well as its commitment to the land grant institution to improve the health and well being of all Missourians. At that time, I was asked to be Senior Program Director of, of Health and Safety with an extension, in addition to continuing as my role in rural health with the School of Medicine. So what we did was we spent some time combining our efforts and we formed the Office of Health Outreach, Policy and Education, and we call it HOPE which brought together divisions from both the School of Medicine and MU Extension. So the divisions include the Rural Track Pipeline Program, which another colleague of mine and I are gonna be presenting that next hour. The Missouri Telehealth Network, which many of you are familiar with that does show me ECHO. The Center for Health Policy, which does 
data analysis. They have all the Medicaid data. They do Kids Count and many other programs that help statewide efforts. Continuing Education for the Health Professions, and then CHEO. So we were created as a focused and deliberate partnership to help carry out the, the vision of this unique collaboration. And what's unique about it, it's the only focused directive of its kind at a land-grant university. So it's the first partnership that we know of between a school of medicine and extension. And as I mentioned, we also work with, with nursing and public health within, within the school of health profession. And HOPE will work to translate the School of Medicine research initiatives to practice increased connections and outcomes with both internal and external partners, develop health promotion resources, partner with the Sydney, the Sydney Sheldon Clinical Simulation Center, that's so hard to say, within the School of Medicine to provide simulation education and resources and to offer technical assistance to Missourians, helping them thrive at every stage of life. This is the first for the University of Missouri, and we believe it will transform the work we're doing in health by expanding our scope, our reach, and possibilities that exist. Next slide. So as Chiquita mentioned, um, we, met as a group of those divisions. I wanna say we started last November with a consultant to do a strategic plan and to develop a mission for hope and salient features of what we can do together. And we came up with some ideas that we've been doing and some of the things that, we, um, that we've just started doing. Um, just so we weren't so much working in our silos. And so the first one, um, was the, well, we have a, a, a COVID-19 echo, um, which is Monday at noon. If anyone ever wants to join it, show me echo.org. And there's uh, physicians and other healthcare providers present echo cases. So yes, when Dr. Quinn, yes, your slides have disappeared. Chiquita, our slides disappeared. Yeah. We're not hold seeing the second. slides anymore. Okay, hold on one sec. Okay. So I'll just keep talking. Okay. Um, <laughs> so when Rachel Mutro is the director of the Missouri Telehealth Network, and um, she, when we when when we started partnering with Extension, um, she. Uh, looked at the, the counties in which we didn't have any participants in ECHO. And at that time was right during the middle of the pandemic. And there were, as you probably heard, furloughs and pay cuts for many of our, our faculty and staff. And we decided that with, with some funding that MTN had, that we could improve the reach of ECHO by utilizing extension professionals across the state. And so, Rachel, we, we did a presentation and we were able to bring 23 extension faculty and staff back up to full time. And I believe there was, well, this isn't going to be completely accurate. I don't know how many counties that there was no one participating in ECHO, but we have increased the number of, of, of participants in counties that did not have echo previously. And so it was a win-win situation because now more, more providers are being able to increase their efficacy of their practice in, the, in their county while also extension faculty getting their full pay during the, the pandemic. Uh, building a stronger work, workforce in, in Missouri, MU's extension, excuse me, community health and labor and workforce programs are working at the intersection. Hang on one second, I'm getting messed up too, Barb. Um, working at the intersection of substance use disorder and workforce development. So recovery-friendly workplaces is something that Catherine and Chiquita worked on that fosters a culture that promotes employee safety, health, and well-being through strategies that include 
recovery resources, education, providing technical assistance, and reducing stigma related to the challenges surrounding substance use disorders. Several states, corporations, and organizations across the country are implementing plans to combat to combat the economic impact of this crisis by supporting employees affected by substance abuse disorder and a journey to recovery in the workplace. We did a conference a few months ago and well over a hundred people attended, which was really inspiring to have so many employers really work toward being a recovery friendly workplace and working to hire people that had addiction issues. And so again, a win-win situation. We've also been working on a rural vaccine action group. We CHEO has partnered across extension programs with agriculture and environment to address vaccine hesitancy in rural area. We started meeting almost a year ago to emphasize the importance of flu vaccinations during the pandemic. We wanted to do flu first before we expanded to um, the, the, the COVID vaccine because the COVID vaccine wasn't available at that time. So we wanted to increase the number of, of, of flu vaccines through media toolkits and resources and talking points. And we started having webinars every month to increase the education for not only extension providers, but others to take, for the extension provider, extension personnel to take into their communities to educate them about vaccines. And it was kind of funny because we had many people that were hesitant in the agriculture and environment. And one of the lead faculty in ag, he was like, well, he goes, I never really got a, a flu vaccine, but he goes, I never miss vaccinating my cattle. And so we convinced him that it was time for him to get a flu shot. And he also followed up with the, the COVID vaccine. And then the Healthcare Workforce Project is a partnership with, with Center for Health Policy and the Office of Rural Health. And it's committed to building the knowledge and tools to understand the characteristics and predict future needs of our healthcare workforce to ensure equitable access to care. So, it implements and analyzes surveys to understand the demographics, skill sets, and workplace characteristics of Missouri healthcare workforce to support policy development and provider needs. So, again, that's the, the project that we gather the data um, as people re register for their license. And we've expanded the minimum data set of, of what professionals answer. And if anyone's interested, the most comprehensive report that we have is, is regarding nursing. And if anyone's interested in that report, um, let me know. I mean, it's, it's 75 pages long, so it's definitely um, an afternoon by the pool, um, but it's, it's extremely comprehensive and we don't have to guess where our nurses are practicing, what their level of training is, where we need more nurses. Um, and so it's, it's, been, it's very good for our schools, our hospitals, et cetera. Next slide, please. So the Office of Hope, we also looked at beyond our longstanding and extensive collaborations. Um, it, it, we've, we have found that it makes us competitive for grants and enables our units to negotiate contracts. And when we added up all the grant dollars that we've received, and many of our grants do go across all of the divisions of HOPE, we have about $27 million in external funding. And um, we, should, we should get another award soon. And actually this, this figure doesn't include a, a grant. And I don't think your CHEO sliding group included the grant that you just got Chiquita on, on rural health and safety. Uh, I actually increased it. So it's $1.6 million in grant funding. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, so when we, when we talk to funders and they understand that we have, you know, not only the workforce development, the, the, uh, um, see the data from CHP, the Show Me Echo resources, and community health and the infrastructure of extension to carry out scopes of work 
it just makes it extremely valuable. So I really want the people on the presentation. I'd like to know a little bit more at the end about who all of you are and what you do and just be thinking about ways that we can collaborate with all of you, because just in the last, I mean, during COVID, number one, and, and just in the last less than two years, the impacts that we believe that we've made in the state um, towards health and well-being, access and disparity, it, it's just been extremely rewarding. Next slide. So we haven't talked about next gen, but next gen, this is what the building's going to look like um, at the University of Missouri. And yes, it's an absolutely beautiful building. The ribbon cutting is going to be October 19, 2021. But, you know, people in Missouri or, like, or rural Missouri or even in urban Missouri, they're like, OK, great. The University of Missouri has this new, beautiful building. You know, what does that what does that mean for us? Next slide, please. So that the initiative was launched in 2019, and it's an initiative that was inspired by the National Institute of Health, focused on precision medicine and precision health. The Next Gen Precision Health Initiative will accelerate research activities of the MU systems for universities and health system. So what precision health is, for example, and I am not a physician, um, but my understanding is if someone has a cancer diagnosis, for example, what precision health is, we are working towards research where instead of everyone with breast cancer getting the same chemotherapy, it's actually built out of your out of an individual, what's best for them based on their DNA, their type of cancer, their age, and other other demographic. And so it's just it's just really, really, really improving the precision of health on an individual basis. So developing the seamless research practice partnership is critical to the success of this initiative. So how do we do that? We need to combine the high tech next gen precision health research with the innovation of the high touch MU extension programming and with on the ground specialists in the communities across the state which enables a clear transitional pathway to increase the lifelong health and well-being of individuals and communities in the state and beyond. And as Dr. Adams said, which I'm not going to remember the quote, but basically you need to ask the community what they need and then bring the precision health to the community. So we're hoping to develop, pilot, and refine dissemination and implementation protocol to translate research and science into the Missouri communities to reduce disparities and equities and to improve population health outcomes. And we cannot do that without community, without extension, and input from our stakeholders statewide. And, and we are working, meaning, the faculty and staff of HOPE, we are working very hard so the university researchers know and understand the role of extension in the communities and the success of NextGen. Next slide, please. So you can read the, the quote from um, Dr. Zwei, but again, the partnership between MU Extension and NextGen Precision Health provides a conduit building upon Extension's substantive knowledge and skills of campus faculty and statewide partners and decades of experience in planning and providing technical assistance and training. CHEO builds statewide trust, and now it serves as a bridge to information, education, resources, people, and organization at the local and state level. I'll give people a second to read the the quote. Next slide, please. Hope and CHEO are becoming a valued partner at the table and is strategically and efficiently connected to the community. Through NextGen, the university and system will strive to identify future community health issues and work upstream to ensure initiatives are focused on the whole person's health and well being. Next 
Next slide, please. As we move forward, we wanted to bring a sense of curiosity to our work. We're interested in trying new things and we're not afraid of failing. When we fail, we will learn from it and that is how we will innovate. When we get it right, our communities will benefit and that is how we will add value. As we said earlier, in reference to translating research to practice, this is a golden opportunity to share best practices, celebrate small wins along the way, and be supportive of our partners across the state and local communities. So we wanna be curious, innovative, service-oriented, and share best practices. Next slide. We will work together to create an environment where all Missourians can thrive at every stage of life. When Missouri thrives, we all thrive.